Hi guys, so this episode that is going to air after the intro was actually filmed last week. And many of you might have already seen this episode with Mornay on Katherine Edwards' channel. But in case you haven't, I am airing it on my channel as well. Mornay is one of my favorite human beings in the whole entire world. And I am so fascinated by his story and his love of fire spinning. So. Please, if you have not seen this episode, sit back and watch it. Of course, Mornay, most of you know Mornay from Aquarius Rising Africa, and I will be putting those links down in the description box below. So I have got the biggest grin on my face. I say this every time, but I can't tell you how much I love interacting with you amazing people. So it's the 6th of January. So I'm going to say happy birthday to my nephew, Alex. Um, it was a big day last year, 6th of January. It was meant to be a big day this year. And it is a big day because my beautiful, beautiful co-host, Bryce and I, um, Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta, we are launching today um, our Discover Your Passion series. And when we were thinking about who we wanted on our first show, the unanimous decision was the amazing Mornay Venter. Now, have I said your name right? <laughs> Mornay is good. And then it's like Venter. It's very Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm hopeless uh, with names, absolutely hopeless. Me too. I'm hopeless with names completely as well. So I will not. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a channel as well. I get all kinds of uh, pronunciations and yeah. spellings. But yeah, I love any. It's good enough. I like Monet. Some people call it Monet with an A and a Y at the end. So it's like Monet. And that's how my grandma actually spells my name till this Bye. day. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And Bryce has got an exotic name as well. And I notice you get all sorts of spelling of yours. And I might yes. Catherine's, so I might have to make something more exotic up than Catherine. You can change its spelling around. Yeah, my name actually is my mother's maiden name, which is a big yeah. thing to do here in the South. And it's actually French. It's actually Brice. But when they came over from France, like a couple hundred, however many years ago, they adapted the English pronunciation, which is Bryce. So Bryce is the name now, but with the Y, that's the Scottish version, but with the I, it's Bryce, which is French. And I always hated my name because when I went to camp, sleepaway camp as a little kid, they would like put you in the boys side because they yeah. thought it was a boy. Um, but then as I got older, I probably wouldn't find that. But as a little kid, I was little kid, I thought that was not fair. But uh, but yes, yes, we all have we have pool names though. And Catherine, we could just we could make some really interesting spelling for yours, exactly. like with the, with the hip hop artists do. Catherine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so the reason why Bryce and I were we have loads of chats off camera, and we were just saying we're, we. We love the fact of all the interesting people that we've met in this journey, including everyone who comments, seeing the amazing people sort of in there. And what we wanted to do moving forward into 2022 is just explore um, that people's different passions and skills, because we all know that everyone has got a unique gift. And sometimes as we get older, we have that suppressed, you know, the children just, if you ask a young child what they want to be when they grow up, they'll come up with all sorts of things. And there's no judgment in terms of one's better than the other. They're passionate about all of it. But as we get, grow up, we can have some of this knocked out of us. So mm -hmm. we know that when on a daily basis you do something that really brings you joy, everything around you changes um so you know i can be i can have had some bad news or a bad mood and i'll hop on a video with bryce and then suddenly the world's great again because you're so uplifting and positive about everything so okay. you have got a very very special passion i'm sure you've got more than one but the one that we were going to be speaking about today predominantly was your fire dancing oh yes and well, i knew nothing about it so I well, want to know everything about it. Well, okay. Firstly, I just want to say thank you guys for inviting me. And when I got that message, I was like, awesome. And when I heard about the subject matter, I'm like, okay, the universe, God is like, 
putting me somewhere there. And since you invited me, the word passion is I've been really reflecting on that word a lot and how it's very much connected with everything inside of you. And I didn't want to go look at the definition of that. I wanted to go look at my understanding, the feeling of that. And Catherine, when we last spoke together on your channel as well, you brought out the word mystery and it really clicked with me. It's like when we try to find the answer like on an intellectual level, it's almost like, okay, cool, now, now you think you sort it out and you have it and you understand it, but it keeps you limited from really experiencing more. There could be something more to it, which is not intellectual. So I really went into that feeling of passion. And for me, it's dancing, you know, dancing, dancing, creating, expressing yourself, connecting, and not just con connecting with yourself, obviously with connecting with God, connecting with each other, connecting with animals. So I always had this passion of connecting and expressing myself. I always wanted to share all this joy and love that's inside of me because I felt I've been born with passion. I've always had this passion inside of me and I, I just felt I needed to, do, that's why God, God blessed me with a lot of gifts and because God knew I'm going to have a rough road ahead of me. You know, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to give you a lot of gifts and you can play with it. So it's those interests that you find um, inspirations from. So this could be drawing. I, I love drawing, singing, dancing, animals. As a, I, I, was, I always felt like the little outsider boy in my life. So I was went into nature, I always brought animals home, <laughs> lots of animals. <laughs> my parents hated my parents like, not one more animal. Okay, I wrote two, three days later. Oh, yeah. look at this little lizard. <laughs> <laughs> so I always, I, I felt like the curiosity in, as, as a child, the curiosity in life, really um, searching for your passion. That probably was the process of searching for your passion is to be curious. Be curious to do the things that you love. Maybe there's something you don't even know that you love and you might like it, you know? And for me, it's always been like I knew all this stuff when I was bored, but I couldn't see people seeing this stuff as well. I felt like people couldn't see that my parents and stuff like that. So I always felt like I could rip out this feeling inside of me and put it inside my mother or my sibling. It's just like, feel that, feel that. <laughs> So, so with dancing and singing and art, creating, expressing myself, that's where I really um, developed that gift inside of me. I always want to say, uh, sorry. <laughs> they share their know. passions. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. So I would, uh, for me, the, um, that would be to go connect with God, with myself, and just sitting and drawing. That you go into that space where you just connect, not necessarily consciously with God, maybe or with Source, but you go into that space and you um, you dance and you move. You're just in connection with yourself. You're like completely in this alignment. Suddenly, you don't think about things. Suddenly, it's just you're in this space of connection. That's the only words I can find for it. And then you, if you had a feeling you were frustrated at school or you were frustrated that you don't, your mother is not hearing you or your father is not calling, whatever the reason be, then you just express it. Either you sing a song or you start, I dance in my room and I'll do all kinds of moves. And that's the way that got me through it. So I was, I, I, so that really, that dancing and singing and creating got me through a lot of things in life. And I think with everybody in this world, I mean, if we didn't have like things we loved as kids, luckily as kids, we were connected with the things we love. Yeah. Um, some more than others, but those moments, those moments that you actually do it, then you overcome difficulties and you connect again and go back. And you find that passion. But I think passion without purpose is a purpose and passion kind of goes head to head. Yeah. So you have to feel like what you're doing has a little purpose. For me, it was to inspire people. Um, for me, it was also so inspire people or wanting attention as a little kid. Once I did it for attention, the passion went away. I lost it. And once yeah. I did it, to inspire, it fueled. Yeah, that's a really good point, Mornay. In terms of 
when when we do something for anyone other than ourselves like that do you think it loses some of those authenticity or or brings in um the vulnerability of caring what other people think yeah i would say that but not necessarily because you want to do it for somebody else it's the integrity behind it yeah is is it because you want acknowledgement or or attention or do you want that person to be inspired and and uplifted so when you do it from a place i want to really inspire these people right now so i want to put up a nice show or something like that that's beautiful because then you see those people ignite because art really if you art inspires people it ignites the passion in people if people see somebody sing on stage or dance this beautiful dance that sparks something inside of them that divine spark of god activates within them and they really like start feeling stuff yes as an artist we can actually you can actually just ignite that spark yourself but for most people that live a mundane life it's almost like their um addiction sometimes you know that's why they like to get and um, that's why they get hooked with like modern like um Beyonce and stuff like that because they ignite sparks but it's not the spark you want get ignited within you because they will just invert that spark but i mean that's what art brings out of people but if you do it in a way for attention and stuff like that it if you lose passion it doesn't make sense i can remember when i was started going to the corporate world i was always like i always told my parents i don't give a hell i'm going to do what i love <laughs> and make money i'm not going to do something that you think i should do or do to do, do and eventually i did and i studied animation but anyways in the corporate world working for doing stuff that's not in your integrity like uh, making an advert for um a hunting farm a yeah. trophy hunting farm you know not in the world will i do that yeah. <laughs> and i i stood i stood i stood my ground and actually i got away with it. the only person that got away with i don't want to do certain things but i used my gifts not in a purposeful way anymore and in that sense my passion went away mm. it went completely away so it's it's not necessarily doing what you love all the time it has to have pur- purpose you have yeah. to have a it has to have purpose either way to inspire and connect so that you can connect with source like you just dance because that's what's beautiful for you or you dance to inspire and like whatever but if it if it goes to a place where you feel like you have to do it for for some other company who doesn't respect this or you have to do it in just for money or then you lose that that gift that love that you have for something just it's almost like purpose. that that passion in your soul that god gives you when you have to like swallow your integrity and use it to make money it's almost like selling your soul pieces of your soul a little bit and i think Absolutely. that I think you're right i think that people start getting burnt out all of a sudden that ignition is that 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 fire is gone but it's interesting you were saying that about connecting with god and um even the yoga sutras talk about like in the om being the name of god because it's a vibration you know we yeah. call god god but god there's a beginning and an end but god has no but, but it's that vibration when you say the om you feel it and so when you're in that flow of of igniting that um god given passion or talent whatever it may be you're actually living that vibration and it's like you talk about performing and it's like you know with with some people they perform for their ego to be praised but others perform to share yeah to share they don't see themselves as better than they're trying to share with humans mm. and i think that's a huge difference too is that you know when when you do start to compromise the, the passion and um and it does become more of a stepping stone of of ego praise versus celebrating the vibration of god yeah i say it's a beautifully it's that sharing that's that sharing is that connecting wanting to give um i can remember when i was a little boy i was like i don't know how young i was but i can remember my parents were fighting in the house it's, it's probably before 7 6 around there and it only took me many years i must say since i met chantal as well chantal really helped me to really go deep deep in this stuff it took me like many years to just go back deep digging 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 trying to see everything and finding all my treasures inside that i could really remember be- beyond that point of 7 because i believe as a kid you came in here all knowing 
<laughs> and you knew, yeah. you were so aware. You knew exactly what coping mechanisms you have to activate at what point, what button to push, where to put like everything exactly before that six, seven year mark where you're going to forget everything and you're going to start growing your ego and become so, you know, yeah. that beautiful. And okay, now we're going to, let's do this human thing. <laughs> the matrix, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, so it took me a long time to get to that place. I really needed to really understand why I felt how I felt, why I felt about my mother, father, myself, siblings, everything. So, and once I get to that place, I can remember sitting with God. I was sitting outside with my daughter, my, my, with God, and I was like, how are we going to help these people? <laughs> Talking to my family. <laughs> how are we going to help these people? <laughs> That's adorable, though. <laughs> yeah, it is frightening, isn't it, when you, what you were both saying then. It's like we've spoken so much uh, uh, on various different angles over the last year about, you know, the, the education system, the, the um, medical system, the sickness system rather than healthcare system, every system that we have political system, the financial system. Mm. And it's so interesting to see how how as you grow up and go through these stages, you know, being a mum myself, I can see the changes in my children when they then started going through the schooling system and how so much of their joy basically got pulled out of them because you're so forced to conform into something that's that's not yourself and and the competitive side of things and that how early the jealousy kicks in and that doesn't come from the children it comes from the reaction of the adults to the children yeah. um and you know hindsight's a wonderful thing but when when you talk about your dancing Mornay was there a stage in your life where you sort of got self-conscious about it at all, or did you never have that problem? Yeah, let me continue with that. It's, um, so it's about, for me, what's always about how can I connect with my, how can I help my family? So it was about how can I talk with them? How can I connect with them? Because they didn't give me the words, because as a young kid, you don't have the words. I mean, oh, they, you, they give you their language. <laughs> yeah. You don't have, I, I can't speak like, okay, you are feeling insecure because you are scared of that and you are scared of husband and you love, love, love. So, you, as a kid, you can't really give them the words why they, um, so you try to connect with them in a different way. And that for me was like drawing them a picture, dancing, singing. And I've never felt insecure as a kid. Never, never, never. My older brother hated me because I could sing on that mic and the whole neighborhood will hear more days see you again in the neighborhood. <laughs> it's like I, before my throat broke, so I was singing Celine Dion. Very loud. So you never get that. Um, I luckily was very stubborn. I was stubborn. I was so stubborn. And I was so... Because I knew what I had in God, in source, inside of me, I have not one moment doubted my gifts or thought it's less than that or anything. And that's where actually I, I got, get very competitive in that level as well. So I always try to push myself more. Um, but you always, I mean, self-consciousness is always a thing that comes in now and again. I mean, you're always going to have self-consciousness and, and, and then it always blocks you a little bit but luckily i don't think i i always like i just push through i did it it's like once i do it it's almost like i'm not me it's like when i was a little boy i have drawing pictures for people in the class and i draw it for all the girls pictures anybody who has a request pictures um i've it's always never felt like it was me. If somebody says you're drawing a beautiful picture right now, it didn't feel like, I felt like very like, okay, fine. How do I handle this? Because it never felt like I was drawing this stuff. It was like, there was something out of me, God. I felt like it was God drawing, you know, it's, if, I, that's, if I can explain it in that way. I always felt like I'm just moving my hand. I'm just moving my body. It's, 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 it's not something that, I didn't have to work hard for this stuff. Mm. 
I didn't really have to work hard for this stuff. I really was blessed. And again, I, I say it because I had a lot of stuff. I had seven planets in retrograde when I was born. Wow. <laughs> so I had a lot of stuff that I need to deal with, um, which could be like a lot of shows to talk about. But I was blessed with like just having my art, loving animals, connecting with nature. And I had a passion to make this world a better place. I didn't know how, I don't know how. And since um, we started the Sun Kids, actually, we shut down, I would do the Sun Kids, Soul School, the Sun Kids project since way back, like 11, 12, even she, even longer. That's when I really found purpose in my passion. Actually, before even that, when I studied animation, I started giving art classes for a ruler, a ruler area, people that's um, like in this squatters and it's like very very poor people um i was approached to do art classes and afrikaans classes now afrikaans my home language is my worst subject i got like, anyways i was so happy and i started doing it and i actually i had an exam in animation that i just neglected because i have art of classes and afrikaans classes with these kids tomorrow and then i found this passion with kids because Okay, I had passion for animals, but kids are the same. And as only as an adult, I realized, oh, kids, oh, kids are cool. <laughs> so I put them into the same thing. And when I been, went back to them, maybe I also start art classes for kids of AIDS as well. So I was like, really, when I start working with kids and eventually doing the animal communication, when I do animal communication for the kids and the animals, that's when I really felt like, okay, now I'm doing my, I'm doing what, what I'm passionate about, creativity, connections, connecting and expressing yourself. Um, that's when I really found my passion growing and my purpose really fulfilling. Um, wow. Yeah, because I, I mean, the, the first, I'm just thinking now, the first time I did my first animal communication for kids, that was in 2014. That was like, when I finished it, I was like, this is a dream coming true that I didn't even know I had a dream about. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know I had a dream about it. But bringing that together, the, uh, uh, helping kids to express themselves and connect with animals and animals expressing themselves in that connection, that is, that is what all, all the creativity is all about. Dancing, art, it's all about that connection, that blissful connection where suddenly creativity bursts and suddenly you, you're experiencing something that you even didn't knew you could experience. That's, I, I recommend to every person in this world to just start coloring in. If you're not an artist or something, just coloring in, just express yourself, use some colors in your life. That already opens up such things for, for, for any person. Start dancing as well. Everybody can dance. Uh, everybody can dance. Start booing in your room if you must. I just think uh, everybody can I, dance. Everybody can sing. Everybody can draw. If you just had the right um, support when you were growing up or the right tools. But I believe everybody can do this stuff. Every but morning. Your, yeah. Every morning I get up. Um, I get super early to do my uh, yoga practice. But before I ever get on my mat, I, for at least an hour, I will dance around my living room listening to Broadway <laughs> shows. Oh, I think good. I'm a tap dancing legend. I think I'm like winning a Tony. I don't know, but it's it just it's it just frees me though. And if it, it, it you know the the 38 year old man is like, oh, I'm just warming my body up. It's fine. But no, I actually that's my favorite time of day from like four to five a.m. My dog thinks I'm batshit crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> but that is something too. Yeah, nobody no nobody's well. I'm sure my spirit guides are probably laughing, but nobody else sees me, you know. And it's 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 so freeing, and that being able to move to the music, yeah. to hear the voices, the strong, the strong, powerful voices, and that. I believe people have coding in their voices too. So there's that, yeah. there's that, that power there that, um, so yes, I agree with you. Just start dancing. Nobody's the, watching. Funny, the British have got the reputation for being the worst dancers ever, but that's because we're told so in such an early age that we can't do it. But also very much when I was growing up, the arts weren't valued at all. It was all science, science, science sort of thing. And the arts yeah. were very much, um what you did if you couldn't do anything else and it's just absolutely appalling you know it really is now i look back now at the time 
it things these things become normal because everyone's reacting like that um but now it's very very different and i see there's a lot more awareness about how important it is to allow people of all ages to express themselves and my favorite time dancing my horses love it i dance out in the field <laughs> with them and they join in and we have such fun. It's absolutely brilliant to see because they love it. Because when you do just let go and do that, your whole energy changes, your whole energy field completely changes and opens yeah. up. And Mornay, you were saying just before we sort of hit the record button about about coming opening up your heart space and your heart energy. Can you can you speak to that a bit? Yeah, exactly. Um when you do something that you love and you, it, it's, it's, what did I say again? Sorry. <laughs> it was about finding the inspiration yeah. and doing things that you love. So finding that curiosity, always being curious and what you said on the previous, stay in the mystery, be curious and follow that inspiration. Once inspiration, you do it and do the thing, do it with love. And then suddenly it, it just opens up the heart chakra completely and, that's what we are entering into this world now. I think as a civilization, I think we've never been here. If it was thousands and thousands, I really know how many civilizations we've been before, but we've never advanced to this level where we're opening up our hearts. We've always just stayed in these lower vibration chakras of pleasures or um, feelings and desires. Not love. Love is, love is love, uh, for me, love is, um, it's not a feeling. Love is like, it's this opening up of the heart. A feeling, a feeling for me is more like sadness or, or anger or jealousy. That for me is feelings. Love is something completely other, other for me, completely different. It's, it's, it's when all those energy combines, the inspiration, the passion, the purpose, and everything comes up and explodes through your heart. And that's only the thing that you get when you truly express yourself. And as a human species, we are scared to express ourselves. We don't know how to express yourself. We adjust how we express yourself. It's so uh, finding your own voice. It's not just finding your own voice. It's finding your, your truth. Yeah. And for every person, it's very dif difficult to find your truth because everybody tells you what truth is. And so you have to go in. We, we have to go back inside and just go find out where's the desires, where's the inspirations, what ticks what makes you tick why you feel a different why do you why do you why do you feel something and why do you not blah 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 so you have to go really understand yourself and go find your truth within and that's when you have to go into those dark places inside of you and <laughs> and just finally go i mean like i can remember in the last 12 years i've gone down this same path so many times and they're like when i stop scratching the same so it's like enough stop scratching that one so i had to learn that and then there's also one of those that you had to learn okay this one that you thought was healed there's still some haha <laughs> it's like nasty stuff still inside so you have to go cut that thing open again and go look inside again so the more we go we want to understand yourself you have to get to know yourself and nobody's going to give you that truth and it because that's your truth and that's the only way you're going to express your truth is if you really do that inner work that alchemy and all that stuff and that's how you're going to get to that place where your heart just grows open 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 once it burst open and you can express yourself that's where the magic happens and dancing and singing and drawing i mean my goodness i can remember my curiosity to like, just, I want to know everything, the mystery of life. And when I went to go study animation, uh, God actually taught me numerology. I didn't even know it existed. I just was at this place and I was like starting to write, okay, but there's ones and twos, you know, one, two, one plus, um, it's me and you, and together we're two me and it's like i started realizing certain things like add up to each other i started putting emotions to that i started putting everything to that i was like oh my goodness what am i discovering right now i felt like a mad scientist and then i went onto the internet and then i just um realized okay it's numerology it already exists it's well, like oh my goodness you learned it organically <laughs> through your passion yeah. yeah exactly through my passion just connecting with god god i mean i was a very young boy I danced in the church 
That's actually, I made old men cry. And I always had this, I always connected with, I was always connected with God. It's like, I never lost that connection. Instead, I was like, I was like, okay, I will do this. I will do this. You stay on the side. <laughs> I had moments of rebellion. Let's say, let's say that. But I always, God never, I never felt like disconnected from God in my life. Disconnected from myself, yes. Lost my passion a few times, yes. Cried out for God, like, okay, now I need your help. <laughs> but I always felt like, okay, I, yeah, I need to do this myself as well, you know. I can't always have your help in my back. I need to do this yeah. myself. <laughs> like, well, you the, all, get on. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, well, I think most people do that. Yeah, and most people do. Now, you've just hit on something really important that I think is a lot of people um, watching this will be feeling. You said a few times you lost your passion or lost mm. your connection for your passion. So what have you learned through your journey about where people, so if you've got people watching this that sort of feel, God, I just don't know what my passion is anymore. It's been so disconnected for so long. What advice can you give to people to actually start finding and exploring this again? Um, well, go look back again at the things that you used to love. Mm. Definitely go find the love again. Love guides us. Love is like the light that we need. So go find, even if it's little things, go find those little things that you love and then feed that flame. Passion needs to be fueled. Uh, it's not just something you just have to go do it. So it's not just finding the things, you have to do it then. So yeah. even if it's just coloring in, like I said, just start coloring in. Because passion, you have to connect with yourself back again. So go back to yourself. And coloring in helps because when you're in that space of coloring in, you're just sitting with yourself and you're just feeling with, with colors. Colors are the rainbows, the white light of God split into its beauty. So go play with God's light. Go sit and coloring in. I mean, that's one thing. But anything that you might think, maybe you enjoyed horses, then go, go to a horse France and go experience horses again. Just go back to a place where you start feeling that love and allow God, allow the feeling to arise and just remember what you're passionate about. Because everybody, you, it's not like you forgot it. It's just you've, you've not connected with it in a long time. And through love and your intention to connect back to it, I think that will just give you that moment. So go find that moment where you can just feel the love that you've, something that you've done, a place that you have visit, a thing that you've done. But just, I think, just go find a spark of love somewhere. Watch an old movie, see an old performance. I don't know. It's like whatever you feel guided to it. But I think if you, just if you put your mind onto it, if your intention is to go find it, that is the first step. Just make the decision, I want to find my passion again. Once yeah. you make that decision, I believe everything starts falling into place. Then just be open to whatever it is. And stay in the mystery, Catherine. <laughs> stay in the mystery. It might be something new. In the mystery. It might be yeah. something new. You might know, be I, telling whole, you to do something I, new. This whole thing yeah. I've been, this whole time, I used to love to write a long time. As an adult, I'd write. I as a, as a kid, I would we would have to write these stories, and I won some awards as a kid. And as you were talking about that, I was thinking about how many children have these like wild imaginations that adults try to squash. Mm. And instead of squashing, if you had a wild imagination as a child, who knows? Start writing again. Start creating those stories. You could be the next great write the next great American novel. I mean, how mm. many of the, of us have have read novels that are fiction, but that changed our life? Because mm. underneath that imagination is an actual story there and you know we're talking i was just as you were talking about, i was thinking about all the kids i know who've had just these wild imaginations and they know their imaginations are imaginations they're not confused over what is reality and what is playtime but instead of squashing that what if we nurtured that and allowed them to, to write and allowed them to tell these stories and for some people watching because i know on my channel whenever we talk about like the new financial system and the fact that our whole relationship with survival is going to change and people are kind of panicked because they've been uh, conditioned for the matrix and they've, they've packed away all that. I, Cause I think you're right, Morning. I think kids come out mm. and they're like, this is what I'm here to do. 
this is this is what's going on and then we shove them in school and that totally gets ripped away from them and um but for everybody going back to that like what did you and i know for me even when i'm at my parents house just looking through old pictures sometimes i'll remember feelings and i'll remember joy um my cousins my on my mother's side of the family my mother had three sisters and their parents passed away very young so growing up my mother and her sisters did a really good job of keeping um us together. And so my cousins on my mother's side, I grew up with them like brothers and sisters. And there were eight of us. And every summer we would go back to the low country, the Charleston area, the beach where my mom, my mom's family was from. And we'd all live together in this house. And wow. the eight of us, we were constantly forcing our, our poor parents. We were constantly forcing them to watch us put on plays. We would put on plays like every night together. And uh, last month I was at one of my cousin's engagement parties and we decided all of my cousins that we were going to get another house and we were going to put on a play together, together as adults. We were going to just do it all over again as adults because that we love that. Just talking about what we used to do as children and that, that joy of just playing together and creating. And we would take the towels and make costumes out of towels and, you know, tie things, our father's uh, ties around our head to keep things on. And, you know, it, it, that is that. So just going back to that innocence, that pure, yeah. cause that, and there's trust. You talk about the love. And I kept thinking like, you know, as adults, we decide, and I see this in something like yoga all the time. As adults, we have this idea that we've got to, we're going to start something. We're going to be a novice, but yet we can't be a novice. We just have to get it and we have to do it. But there's such, it sounds cliche, but there's such learning in the, in the journey. And when you start to trust that, that love where you don't feel so insecure, where you allow yourself to stumble and fall and to color outside of the lines mm -hmm. a little bit, you never know where that, that misstep isn't actually a misstep and it's going to push you in a direction you need to go. And so just in that love, then you have trust. You don't have that insecurity anymore because right. you know, you might not know the journey, but you know, there is one. You know, so there's there's magic there, and that is the mystery too. When speaking of the mysteries, one of my favorite quotes, and I think we all can attest to this over this time period, is the more that I learn, the less I know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you said it beautifully there, Bryce, because um the only video that I could find that I could share with you guys tonight is like is the latest one. And I had a fire stuff and I threw it in the air and it fell on the ground, and I've been struggling about because it's this big stop it's full of fire and throw it in the air it falls on a kid's head you know you don't want that stuff in your life but that night i was also like i was like no nope, i'm gonna do it again and i did it twice afterwards and i got it right where i got it when i caught it and it's that thing it's like you just, suddenly it's like okay i'm gonna fall and make mistakes but i'm i'm gonna continue and, and that, then suddenly you get that trust in yourself yeah. That trust. Can, you the video? Can I ask, how did you learn? How did you find fire dancing? Like, yeah, how okay, yeah, yeah. I just want to know it because it's such a wonderful. <laughs> when Bryce told me that you did fire dancing, I was like an excited little child. I was like, I have got to see this. Because like, how does one trust. stumble upon this? Like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I must say um, it's it's super amazing. I, I've I've I met a friend. The name is Zelda Lawrence, and she's got her own company, Evolve Fire Spinning and Performances. She's she's this amazing chick, and she's like she can grow to eighty or ninety, and she still be this young little. And she's just this amazing girl, and we. Um, we actually met through Chantel as well because they worked together as well. She did her bookings and stuff. And she was just like, one day I was like, oh, awesome. This is fun. And she's like, okay, cool. Can I book you for spots? I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And so I didn't really have any real training for it. It just really came naturally. Like I said, I was just, I was like, I didn't have to le learn hard for anything artistic and everything I, when i do it it just happens i like even yoga i don't do daily yoga but when chantal comes here i'll do like normal little stretch yoga so when chantal comes here and do a powerhouse yoga i can do all those moves where other people like suffer so it's just i'm too i'm very lucky <laughs> god blessed me but you have that, that trust I, I think that's I, that trust you have you fall into I, that center of trust I think God had a fail safe with me with certain things. It's like Mona has enough to deal with in this level. Let's just you can <laughs> you can have this side. But anyways, um, but once I did so I met her and I did my first show on my 30th birthday. 
exactly on my 30th birthday in a, in the a rural area of the big city, like, in, it was amazing. I was with my parents. I was like, okay, I have to go. I'm going to do fire spinning. And, and it just worked. It just flowed. And that flames, it's so amazing. It's not like when you're dancing on yourself and suddenly when you're dancing with the flames, it just, everybody disappears around you. It's, yeah. it's no, I so want to do this. I so, so want to do this. It's I've amazing been- when the flames goes around you. You start feeling your outer body. It's like yeah. you have such respect for that flame. It's almost, it's passionate. It's like, it's this fire. You can feel the fire burning inside of you whilst you're playing with that fire. You completely oh, yeah. lose yourself. It's like... <laughs> It's, it's something I can't even really express. It's like the first time when, when, I, when I did my first animation. So all my life I'm drawing beautiful pictures and stuff. And then seeing your first character talking and having feelings, you know, it's like, wow, now my picture is actually living and breathing. It's talking. Well, the same with that, with the dancing and starting to dance with fire. Because I did, I did jazz. I did modern freestyle i did my on the stage dancing in the spotlight stuff you know theaters and stuff like that but when i started playing with fire oh it was just completely and it's one of those um two catch scenarios i'm enjoying it for myself and people around me are igniting so i don't even have to think about inspiring them with my movements or like whatever i just connect with the flame and they just get ignited so dancing with fire it's it's beautiful and this actually one picture i want to show as well when i was dancing with fire in the rain with a fire oh, wow i'm and gonna was- break into the adele song now but you can <laughs> hear that <laughs> so, oh, the other day just before you show us a video i can't wait to see it so i messaged bryce the other evening because all my family were out and so I had glass one, I put all my songs on and I was dancing in our big lounge to things. And I was really lit, just to Adela and I give uh, set <laughs> of the rain and everything. And then I messaged Bryce and I thought if anyone could see me now, but the cats enjoyed it. <laughs> I was well, quite it. amused. Yeah. So can you share a video with us then? Can you show us one? Because I'm going to do this. Yes, definitely. Let's- I mean, it's it's super badass too, Mornay. The fact that you do fi- like you you spin this fire, like that is really. I mean, talk about impressive. Because I can only <laughs> imagine having to work your energy with another na- natural energy that is so powerful. You know, to have that respect for that nature, and then to talk about move respect. with it. <laughs> talk about respect. They see. Is it on? Yes, it's just um, the pitch is up. Yeah. So, so this is the one with the f- where I was playing with the f- um, fire sword in the rain. And it was almost like feeling like I'm cutting through sorrows, cutting through regrets, cutting through, um, you know, like with the fire, cutting through emotions. To me, that... Transforming was- them, turning them into like... I, I, that night, I can't even experience, tell you what the experience was with dancing in the rain. That's also with the sword. That's that makes me emotional. It really makes me emotional as well, Bryce. It's like, to me, that is like the visual representation of we, we talk about the divine matrix, uh, you know, the connection and everything. And th- this, to me, you, it's like you can see the invisible energy. You've now brought that to light of this connection that binds everything. That is just stunning. Mm. Absolutely. It's like dancing with the elements and starting to really, it's, you start respecting. Once I started dancing with fire, I started really thinking about the elements. And because I was at that stage very much connected with my spiritual self, so I was very much aware of fire. <laughs> dogs. Yeah, being aware of where the fire, water. Sorry, you guys. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, so I was very aware of water, air. They're excited. They're expressing their passion right now, too. They're just agreeing with you. <laughs> somebody's walking by the house. 
You know, okay. we call my dog the sheriff because he does the exact same thing. If anybody yeah. dares walk past our house, he's got to he's got to inspect it and let you know. So I totally get that. You know, you talk about the spirituality, though. Do, do you feel like it looks like it, it almost looks ritualistic in a very positive way? Like, do you feel when you're doing these quote unquote performances like you're actually doing a prayer? You're actually in the process, do you feel like it changes the vibration of the area where you are or the people around you and that sort of like majesty of, of the magic of spiritual ritual practice? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Can we give me just a second to just go? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go right ahead. Go right ahead. We can talk. It's amazing, isn't it? When you see this, this is really art in action, isn't it? I mean, absolutely it's beautiful, absolutely stunning. And that's pretty amazing photography as well, isn't it? I don't know if I, I mean, talk about like being brave. I don't know if I would be brave enough to do what he, like, I think I would have this, I would be like self-conscious uh, about burning myself or burning someone <laughs> else. The fact that you're able to submit to that movement is so oh. beautiful. I'm so yeah. drawn to this. I just love fire. I've so always been so drawn to, to fire. And it's interesting because I'm not drawn to water at all. So, so many people, virtually everyone I know, apart from me, wants to live on the beach and everything. And I don't. I'm a woods and fire person. And I'm sure it's because I drowned at Atlantis. Because <laughs> Oh, I've been drowned as a witch on too many occasions because I really don't like going under Probably water. many times, many times. <laughs> fire, when I see the fire, I just want to, I literally want to go out and start doing this now. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, uh, Bryce, back to um, the question about the um, spiritual side. It's the same as when you go into a space where, where, where as a young boy, I was sad. Um, maybe my mom and dad is fighting or stuff like that. And I will go into my room and I will start, it was like starting to connect with God. And you like start unloading yourself and you start connecting to that feeling and you're like trying to process that feeling. Either I was singing or starting to dribble a picture or um, dancing in my room. It's basically the same thing that happens when you start doing, for me, it's when you start doing it once that you work with that flame, you completely go into that space of you respect, you're in your integrity, you like. So definitely it's like a kind of ritual. And especially this, um, this one time year for me was very special because I was going through stuff here and it started to rain and I was playing for the first time with a fire sword. So it was like kind of like, this for me was definitely a, where I broke through and transformed stuff inside of me. And um, so it definitely, it can definitely be used for like a spiritual transformation. And especially with fire, when you do like the boy spinning, like this one with the balls, it really balances your left and right mind. It's like these flames, you like learn to like go with, it balances the left and right mind. So it's very good. I mean, any person can do that just to, for the benefit of balancing that left yeah. and right brain movement and thing. It really opens up stuff, that's for sure. It's so interesting. Looking back at the pictures where you said you were going through stuff and we see these beautiful pictures of just such raw beauty of the elements of, of the, the majesty of nature and that movement. And it's interesting. Sometimes we, I think that God allows us to drop into these it's almost like you have to descend before you can ascend to, to drop into this like suffering and pain in order to then reach deep and to find that element of magic that is in that that movement you were doing mm -hmm. so it kind of gives yeah. you a whole new perspective on suffering and what what that can actually how we can use that energy to help us fuel us and help us grow versus wallowing in it and just staying yeah. in that low vibration yeah, transform us, resurrect us. You can use the suffering as the fuel for resurrection. Yeah. For me, that's how I see it. It's like, um, it's like the well of love for me. You have to have a deep well in order to fill it with love. So in that deep, this is the pain. So the more you're suffering, the more pain you can um, handle the more it can be filled with love and the more passion and the more love and inspiration you will find. And trust me, everybody can dig very deep. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be in the system or, I mean, the people that's in the SRA places, I mean, those people have to go deep with stuff. But we all have stuff where we feel 
insecure or we feel a lack of worth or we feel not good enough or we feel not accepted or we feel Just whatever it is. we all have that same stuff in our life where we felt embarrassed ashamed guilt all that stuff we all have that it's not going to go away and it's not going to help by just doing like okay it's fine i'll do better tomorrow it's just going to build up more layers and more layers and it's been doing that for since we were small since you were small first embarrassment we have the first shame we had um but once you get to a place i think past your 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 teens into your 20s then we have this opportunity where we can start to go and decide how do we want this foundation to be what feelings do i want to carry with me to my series and stuff like that and it could be a great it's a great source of inspiration and creativity i mean i think most of the great artists in this world all got their inspiration from the most tragic tr- most <laughs> tragic things in their life i mean that's why we still study shakespeare whoever whoever shakespeare was that's a topic for another day but all the stories of shakespeare Next <laughs> yeah, it's all the all yeah the conspiracies around that. Um, the the pain that people go through, the stories, the soap opera. It's all the jealousy, the deceit. It's all stuff that we still connect to in a different time because human beings are all we we're, we're, we've been consistently experiencing this hate, this, this same human condition. And mm. how beautiful is that that we can actually, you know, if we look at the the bad guys in in our world right now, they don't want us to transform that. They they don't want us to be able to find that alchemy. I love how you said that that alchemy of taking that yuck and using it to make something beautiful that actually heals you. You know, that's just that's that's beautiful alchemy. Yeah. That is that is our goal. Like Chantal likes to say, it, it's our gold. All that stuff is our gold. The yeah. stuff that we like to avoid, the stuff we don't want to deal with, the stuff that like to build on and keep us away from is our goal. Embracing our fears, embracing our guilt, embracing our shame, embracing all that stuff and finding the truth and that's what I speak earlier about about finding that truth to express yourself. That was my journey with everything like that with all of this. I was trying to express myself. I didn't feel like people could understand myself. So firstly I had to find a safe space where I can express myself with my connection with God even though it wasn't always conscious you know but as as I'm I know now that's what I was doing back then I had to that the space where I could go in my room and dance sing create and that made me feel connected and understood and I could feel expressed and that was my feel to go out there and that's what i used i used the gifts and but that i had i took it out there and tried to connect with the world as you know growing up now this is what i know how to do so i'm going to use this to maybe this will help me to connect with you know my father or whatever whatever you want to do but i think um, one of the reasons why i've always been so so drawn to cats you touched on earlier monet Oh, what's happened? Oh, I, f- I froze then. Something <laughs> happened then. Yeah, um, yeah, you touched on earlier about uh, maintaining this curiosity. And I, I'm pretty obsessed with cats, always have. I can remember when as a child we, we managed to get our first cat in the house. And my parents moved house specially so that they could live somewhere as safe as possible for a cat because we all know cats wander wherever they want to yeah. and we wanted to be as far away from roads as possible. And I've got I've got five cats at the moment. Um, they're all absolutely amazing, but their curiosity. They say curiosity killed the cat, but their beautiful curiosity every minute of every day of where they're exploring everything around them and taking such joy in that. And when they when you watch a cat exploring something, they're so in the present moment. Yeah, absolutely. You can't distract them because they're so focused and they're they're in their own little world and everything's exciting to them and everything's fun. And when you look at say children nowadays um where there's this constant stimulation all the time and and you were touching earlier Bryce about what beautiful imagination children has got well animals animals don't need a lot of toys to play with things that they will completely Ooh. create their own fun and an and excitement and entertainment and so will young children if you allow them to but now we're filling their lives with 
electronics and phones. I was mentioned to someone the other day that, you know, you go around the supermarket and there's children of two that are playing on mobile phones because they can't even go around. And a supermarket for a young child, it's like colours everywhere and shapes and sounds. It should be a really stimulating place. But the, I think getting back to this curiosity, being curious about everything, that I think everyone who watches any of our work they're curious. They, those are yeah. the people who haven't lost their curiosity because if they had, they wouldn't be watching us. Um, <laughs> but it's so important. And when you maintain that curiosity, you can find joy, excitement, passion in almost anything, can't you? Yeah. And it's also about exploring that curiosity, mm. not just leaving it. I think it's... Uh, and yeah, like cats, I've also got five. Curiosity does kill the cat in that sense. Um, because sometimes you can be curious about the wrong things. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can be like, no. Yes. So it's all back to intentions. It's about finding that intention. What, so that's what I said in the beginning. If your intention, if your decision is to find passion, then you'll find it. But if your decision is to find passion, because um, I want to, mean something or i want to prove something or want to be something other than what you're not then you're not going to find it you're going to lose it so if you, your curiosity can lead you to like astray but it can so you have to everything can be used for the good and the bad obviously that's what these um people have done with us and you can your passion you could be passionate about something or you could be passionate about being right and then suddenly that passion starts becoming this fire of destruction instead yeah. of this fire of um, inspiration. Yeah. So in the same way of curiosity, it's you can either be curious about just, you know, not, but you have to go take action. You have to go explore the ones that you really, you have to go find the love. Yeah. And if your intentions are not aligned, then you're going to be like the curious cat that the eagle just caught <laughs> because it was chasing a bunny yes. <laughs> or something like that. Oh, I sometimes my nerves when I see my cats. It's like something where you have cats, you really learn to trust and let go. You, you, just, you just have to trust that that cat will go out, just like our parents probably with teenagers, yeah. <laughs> that that kid will come back and it will still have all its arms and limbs. And <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying my the difference yeah. in personalities my husband who i've spoke about a lot he's so low back his horse bond so um it curled up here on the side here i've got idris and pumpkin two of my cats and then fluffy duffy over by the fire <laughs> but idris is unbelievable he came from romania he's the coolest dude i've ever met in my life he follows us on every dog walk miles away he goes miles he might disappear off for three days at a time and my husband's completely laid back about it he's just off having fun and me as his mummy i'm just like where's my baby <laughs> and that thank god for the animal communication but it, you are so right Mornay. it's that you know trust him but i wouldn't have it any other way because when i work with clients and they've got house cats it's just so tragic it's just so because of mm. all the animals mm. you've got cats just need to move stretch mm. explore okay, be. Yeah. but as as a cat mum or dad it can be horrifying at times <laughs> so. oh, completely i must say since i started um learning animal communication it's been 10 times better because yeah. now at least i can I can WhatsApp my, where are you? Where are yeah. you going? It's like, okay, cool, you're there, you're there, okay, it's fine. Even when I go um, to other um, towns and stuff, when I'm away for the weekend, I, um, I'll be just like, okay, how are you? And actually, they will contact me. Cats don't, um, they'll contact you if they really need something. I can remember this one time my cat contacted me and she's like, I haven't had my treats yet. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. I called the, the person that was looking at my house and like, okay, mama, she's saying she hasn't had a treat yet. <gasps> He's like, oh, I forgot. And he went to the kitchen and mama was sitting exactly there where the treats should be. Oh, yeah. so the out of the communication helps. And I also had this experience where I lost one of my beautiful black boys. I searched for him for three months and I was like everywhere. And usually I find people's animals very quickly, but I, it was just so hard because he was like moving and moving. And eventually I, dogs got him, you know, dogs, 
finally got to him. And if it wasn't for animal communication, I wouldn't have had that closure, you know. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known that some old lady is holding him in his house or blah, blah, blah. So I really think, and that's part of the, um, the heart chakra thing, the heart opening thing where we're going as a civilization now, the 5D people would call it the fifth dimension, is where we can actually start to talk to the animals. Yes. To nature, nature spirits and all. It's where we can actually, that's where we have that connection. And through passion and creativity and connecting with what you love and just fueling those places inside of us, we get to this place where it opens up. And I was, yeah, again, I would say I'm really blessed and lucky because I really had this strong connection with God since a very young boy, <laughs> very young boy. I always like, I always had this connection of God, but it wasn't about God. It was about what God wanted me, to, well, not even God wanted me to do, what I wanted to do. And obviously that was in alignment. Obviously you want to do the best, you know, you want to do the most, you want to share. I think that's every kid. I mean, yeah. every kid wants to do whatever yeah. it's fun at its best and share with my friends and don't yeah. see my body being hurt. I mean, that's part of everybody. I think it's, it's not a superhero thing. That's a hero God complex thing. It's a real authentic thing. Human beings care about each other and want each other to see each other happy. We want to share our gifts. I think finding your passion um, is one thing and then finding your purpose in that is another thing. And then giving that away is the ultimate thing, sharing that. So how do you give that away? How do you? And that for me is with what me and Chantal is doing with the kids, the soul school. Yeah. So I'm using my gifts, the creativity in the books and ideas and stuff and putting animals and humans together, bringing nature and humans together again. That for me is now the ultimate passion, the ultimate purpose, because all those gifts, all the dancing, singing, everything, everything aligns to one great purpose that affects a lot more so I th and I think that's, that's every human being that's our ultimate goal is to find our purpose and then give it away and share that passion share that purpose because it's lonely when you just keep it to yourself <laughs> that's why all the bad guys are, are bored and just want more planes and just want yeah. more in the crowd or whatever they want but yeah I think that's can I ask if somebody wanted to like explore the the type of fire dancing you do now? Obviously, you're not in America. We're all in three different countries. Is there like an organization people can look at to find in their area? Is there like I mean, I don't even know how this works. Is this like you know, like if someone wants to do yoga, they can just Google yoga in their area. Is there something for people to look for if they wanted to explore what you do in their own home country? Yeah, I think um, I think most places should have fire spirits. I think most places they should be. They're yeah. probably more hiding behind um, circuses or trance parties or something like that. Um, but the place I work for, or, or the friend I work with, Evolve Fire Spinning, I can give you guys the link as well. Yeah, She's cool. amazing. So um, fire spinning, is that a good keyword for people to look, look in their, no. their fire search spinning, for fire yes. spinning? Okay. So yeah. now I know we're going to have people that are going to just – love to explore this because and this is the beautiful thing about doing this series because how many passions are out there that we don't even know exist yeah like so many people have probably have no idea that this actually even exists exactly you know? exactly yeah, sure if you google it you will find like tutorials like easy first steps fire spinning i'm sure if you google it you will find all kinds of videos tutorials videos it makes me laugh, Monet, because in the UK, again, one of the other things we're quite well known for is our health and safety. So you probably can't. <laughs> in the UK, they'd probably make you do it with fake. Um, <laughs> but it's a bit like, you know, I suppose, you know, with gymnastics is almost with the ribbons with like the fake fire. Yeah, exactly. it? So, um, but there's so many ways for people to explore it. And I would say, you know, sometimes you've got to take those risks, guys, you know, with yeah. you... Um, um, I, I, you don't want to be faking it. You want to be working with the real stuff. But don't blame us if you set fire to yourself, okay? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I would say make sure you have a teacher, right, Mornay, when you first yeah. start doing it? Make sure you have somebody there guiding you. Well, if you no, just practice this. Like, you can practice, practice with socks with balls in, long socks yeah. with balls in. So just practice. Once you get it right, 
then don't be scared to burn, baby. Once you, feel like it, once you feel you've got the sock balls ready, then start get, then invest, get you those fireballs, and you it's it's a beautiful experience once you start feeling the flames going around your body and you're just engulfed and you're just like in the center of this like fireball <laughs> so yeah but it's you won't burn down you'll just burn your hair maybe get a like a little bruise. don't grow back but no, i will have had fun in the process so yeah, yeah. oh well, that's yeah. If, if you want to follow your work, Lorne, can we put your social media links down below to follow your journey and see your performances? I know we're all in different countries, but to kind of keep up with you and, and use you as inspiration, as a muse for people who want to. Sure, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'll give you my links. Yeah, I'll put the, I'll send you my links. Yeah. Brilliant. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. definitely. Yeah. Oh, but do you know that I could literally keep talking to you two all night? <laughs> yeah, I definitely. That yeah. has exceeded any expectations I had in terms of that discussion. Discussion. And, and I think we can be 100% sure you are one passionate person. So what a perfect, perfect way to start off our series. And I know we'll be asking you back as well, because I've got a list of so many <laughs> things I want to speak to you about. Um, particularly animal communication, actually, because everyone knows that's a real passion of mine. So, um, but anything else that you want to share with us, either of you two, before we finish? Morne first. Uh, I just want to say, well, I'm going to just say thank you, you two, for inviting me. And thank you for me. Thank you for you two to get got me thinking about passion in a different way, because I really had to think about it when you invited me, uh, how it really flows inside of you and how inspiration and how purpose. I could really see how passion could be destructive and also constructive. So I really, so thank you for that, because I had a little inner journey <laughs> again in the last couple of days. And I just want to say thank you. Um, well, for the audience, I would like to say, you can do it. <laughs> it's there. It's there. It's not that hard. Just um, smell out the love. And yeah, smell the love, find the love, be the love. Love will take you there. And it might sound very hippie, fa airy, fairy, hippie-like in a way, but actually it's very true. But just you got to be true of yourself with it. Really honest with yourself. Even if it means you have to like just first go through some uncomfortable things, but find that love. Don't ever let anything stop you from finding that love inside of you. And go dig so deep into that place if you have to. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to stop there. You've got the love. Just go find it and the passion will arise. <laughs> <laughs> and well, thank I'm you. gonna say yeah. one day when all this is over and and we're in that new earth i hope that you're able to tour around at a and go all okay. over the, the world and and show people live the power of your passion because i i've gotten to know you through aquarius rising africa and you're just such a genuinely authentic just a, such a bright light anyway and it's just such an honor to be in both of your presence like to be on this yeah. journey with both of you so so thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Bryce. From one bright light to another. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, I thank you so much, anyone who's watching this. Um, Bryce and I have had the most amazing response for people wanting to share their passions. I'm really sorry I haven't got back to any of you yet. We have both been after Christmas so snowed up. I'm so behind with my emails. So please, please know we're not ignoring any of you. And if it takes us a couple of weeks to get back to you, we will do. Um, so we appreciate each and every one of you who sort of volunteered to come on and share your passions because um, we can't wait to hear about all of them. So until next week, thank you from all of us. Thank you so much, Mornay. Thanks. And um, we will thank be back soon. Let us know how you enjoyed this, folks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.